Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. And we have returning guest and good brother, Mr. Derek Johnson, who you've seen here before. He has been kind enough to honor us with his presence once again on a monthly basis. And we have many questions that are on the minds and hearts of many of you. So we'll be addressing geopolitical and financial today, as we always do. In case you're not familiar with this man, he is a decorated Army veteran, country music singer, and an author of a book, which he'll be talking about at the end of the said podcast. So if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share so that others can grow in the knowledge you have been afforded. Mr. Derek Johnson, thank you, good sir, for joining us, and welcome back. Good to be here. Yeah, it's an honor. So I'm going to start right off the top. The question I think is probably at the most of the forefront of most people's minds and thoughts right now, obviously, President Trump, um, with the fraudulent arrest, 34 counts that they can't tell you what they are. Uh, he's obviously appealing the, the conviction that's been railroaded against him. So I guess the main question is, what do you see happening? And is the military going to step in? Can you provide some facts over the fiction, please? Well, yeah, you've, you know, you hear people, some people have heard the military stepping in. The military's already stepped in. So, you know, the, the thing is, is that this whole operation was never going to look like what people have always heard about, right? Every, every, in every war we've been in since World War I was really, I mean, when I say fraudulent, I can't take away from my brothers and sisters that served just, just like I did. And then also my family members, we, we served our nation. We took an oath to serve our nation where that got all misconstrued was through people that we allowed. And it's, it, no one's exempt from it. Our family members all the way back got a little too spoiled in this nation, got a little too relaxed, got a little too lazy, if you will. By knowing our found our foundation and knowing our history and knowing uh, that we the people, we the people, that slogan means we're the government. And too many people started saying, and I if I've heard it in my lifetime, then everybody else has too. I've heard people say, well, that's what Congress gets paid to do. That's Congress's job. Oh, it'll just work itself out. That's what they do. Well, that's why we look the way we look. And all throughout from World War I and World War II, those were corporate wars, all right? Now, it, those were bigger because it was obviously a world level. But then we started going into nations, Korea, Vietnam. We went into Beirut, Lebanon. I mean, we've been in Iraq more than, more than once. Uh, obviously, Afghanistan. But then there's Somalia, Bosnia, Kosovo. Uh, there's a few others that we've been in that, that no one's heard of yet that hasn't ever been declared or wasn't even verbalized to the people. I'm not going to say some of those yet just because uh, some of them are still, I, I wouldn't say classified, but I'm not going to talk about them. Um, so everybody that did know about those, when we took an oath, every veteran that's living and every veteran in the ground, Memorial Graves, when we raise our right hand, it's Title 10, United States Code, Section 502. But see, people got to go back to the origin of our military and, and realize what our founders meant when they said, you know, when we take an oath, when it says, I will what? Support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, the Constitution was built for America. It was written for America. It wasn't made for us to go fight wars for money oil and all these other things we've been fighting for that's going to be a hard lesson for everybody hard lesson for humanity because it, it wasn't just us fighting it was these other nations it was those foreign corporate leaders telling their men and women what they were fighting for right and they they bought into what they were fighting for so you got two different people clashing or three or four whatever clashing on the wrong what had nothing to do with us losing our territory, had nothing to do with that, right? It was these corporate leaders. So what everybody's watching right now when President Trump says we have it all, we've caught them all. I mean, he's talking about so many multifaceted different things. 
in every different system, every different, everything that we have that we stand for. He's talking about everything. And I think people, it's kind of like pep rallies. You know, you've been to a pep rally before a game. Well, when you get to the game and then the kids bust through the paper and then the game's over, especially if you win, everybody forgets about the pep rally. Everybody forgets about the speeches and the rah-rah talks and, oh, we're going to get them and we're going we're gonna to line up and smash them in the mouth. People forget about that because they actually saw what they saw. But so many people can't see what they're looking at right now because they don't know the foundation. They don't know what a military occupation actually is. They don't know what a continuity of, actual, continuity of operations actually is by the definition. Some of them sound pretty self-explanatory, but they got to go read those and then they got to read what's under those. And, and once you know those, like me the other day, I watched, I, I, you know, I, it's not laughing at certain people. But it is laughing at some people who they'll be all bold. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden something like that happens. And then all of a sudden they take 10 steps back. And I'm like, well, you're not a patriot if you took even one step back on this guilty verdict. One, what President Trump put into place is so brilliant. Now, he's just a face. There's multiple other men and women behind him and also world leaders that also did this that are gonna get credit when the credit's due, all right? But he's just the face, he was willing to do what? Take the hate, mockery, ridicule, shaming, all, I mean, left a billionaire, playing golf every day, eating five-star meals every day, to take a, a woman holding up his severed head. You remember Kathy Griffin holding that up? Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, and his children had to see that, his grandchildren, if they if they they shielded as much as they could, but everybody always sees something. So here's a man who left that. He's the face. He would have been presented this operation way back here. This would have been probably 2012, somewhere in there. That from my sources of people that I know, way back here. And he would have been said, "Here's the beginning. Here's how we feel like it's going to go." It's like a it's like a war plan. That's all it is. Here's the beginning. Here's how we feel it's going to go. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the phases. Here's about the middle. And then here's the end game. Here's our end prize. Here's our end goal. Just like any other kind of plan in a company or production. You know, you have production goals and things of that nature. Will it always go as planned? No. But it'll go pretty smooth considering they'll stay on the course, basically. Have we lost soldiers during this? Yes, we have. Helicopter crashes. When the when the Tennessee helicopter, the Tennessee National Guard crashed in Alabama, there's a that I that's not that shouldn't be a good nugget for people to say, oh, here's your nugget. But ladies and gentlemen, Alabama hadn't had any state emergencies for Tennessee to be in. That that alone showed everybody that we're in an occupation. But God rest those soldiers. Right, because they they paid the ultimate price through a war that most people don't even know what the war looks like. President Trump, when you say declare a war, people have been duped for so long what a war looks like. But by definition, in the War Powers Act, President Trump did basically declare he declared a defense kind of mechanism, which was what was supposed to be intended by our framers and our founders and what they meant by the protection of the constitution foreign and domestic he put us in a real fashion of defense all right he put us in defense mode but he did declare and he went after trafficking of all kinds that's what human rights abuse is that's all forms of trafficking though when they said human rights abuse they encompassed everything with it that way they didn't have to have a bill for everything or an act for everything Human rights abuse. All right, that initiated the Global Manitsky Accountability Act, which is for Russia. All right, so that's alone right there is another nugget. When when it shows Biden extending that, he's over here dogging Russia. Why would he be extending an order with a, a, a clause in there for an actual Russian entity? All right, it's simple, but yet it, it's so big. 
All right, so trafficking. And then they're doing this trafficking clean out. Well, the trafficking clean out cleans out a lot of things. It also leads to the opioid crisis. He went after opioids, he went after pharmaceuticals. Those are what's been funding a lot of this trafficking, right? Fentanyl and all these different things you've been hearing. But the money trail, you always have to, President Trump told everybody, follow the money. All you got to do is follow the money. You follow the money trails. That's what that's going after. All this stuff that, that you see in the news are distractions, all right? Because the more and more things come out, the more distractions they got to hit you with, like the Chinese balloon. Everybody, oh my gosh, it's, what is a Chinese balloon? That that Chinese balloon, I have it on file. I was tracking it. I had been tracking it, all right? But I have it on file, dated stamp, time stamped on my phone, February the 3rd, from way back last year. United States registration. It's not a Chinese balloon. It's nothing Chinese at all. And it's not even anything that it's, it's just, they don't even do anything. When you look at them and you go look up what this actual balloon actually looks like, what it is, it's just the Air Force and, and the Space Force and all these different places, they're using, and, and the military will use this kind of technology. All right. So, so the, there was a distract. Hey, look over here. And everybody did. Everybody looked over here. And then something's going on over here. And it's perfect. Checkmate. Y'all fell for it. <laughs> but it's not like we're wanting to make fun of you. It's not that. But what I've been telling people is this. If you're a Christian, all right, then your foundation that you need to stand on is the Bible. It don't matter how crazy people call you. It don't matter if people mock you, ridicule, laugh at you, hate you, persecute you. That Bible, if you're a Christian, you can't walk around saying I'm a Christian and not know the Bible. Because the Bible even tells you that. The Bible says it's better not to know than to know and deny. It also tells you not to be a lukewarm Christian sitting on the fence. It says, ye of little faith. Remember? They people, when people say, why is this guy getting all mad and upset? Why did Jesus walk in the temple and flip over the tables? I think he got a little mad, didn't he? Uh, he showed a little. So when you read that Bible, that's your foundation. The Bible also tells you to keep these words close to you because there may be a time that you don't have them, right? So when you read that Bible, that's your consolation. If every Bible in the world was destroyed by a fire or a flood or something crazy, that, but if you read it, you have it right here. Well, see, that's how I am as a Christian because I know my foundation. But also, as a President Trump supporter, I say, I ask people all the time, I'm like, how can you support a man when you don't even know what the role of the president is, right? We call it a president, but the actual term is a chief executive officer of the executive branch, mm -hmm. all right? So his role is to make sure the laws are being enforced, but he's also to make sure Congress is doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? That's why he has veto power. That's why he also can sign executive orders. If things ain't getting done, well, I'll get it done. Da, 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 da. Here you go. Or declare a national emergency, which is really declaring war. When you go read the War Powers Act, a president can declare war via national emergencies. All right. So he did that. He's done a lot of those. And so if everybody will put that as like their manna, like the Bible talks about, the manna in your spirit. You're either going to do this. There's two things right now. You're either going to fall for the drama constantly because you don't have a foundation, like the Bible verse. If you build your house upon sands, when the winds and the rains come, you're going to be topsy turvy always, and it may just destroy your house. It may knock you all the way back to point A again. You got to work your way all the way back up. Or you can listen to a few like me, and there ain't many like me. There, unfortunately, I don't mean that towards myself, but I meant like, there's only a few out there that keep just pounding the laws and the orders. It's it's all this other stuff don't matter. It's drama. It's noise. It's distractions. Mm -hmm. You can build your house on the rock, like the Bible says, the foundation, and put the laws and orders that President Trump put into place with the military occupation and the continent of operations and then work your way forward. And then when a day like the other day happens, you go, oh, I know what that is because of this. It's real simple. 
I hate using the word get rid of, but but let's just it seems like it's a southern slang or you know, it's like a slang saying if if the Democrats wanted to get rid of President Trump for good out of their life, because if you're a patriot or if you're a President Trump supporter, if you're someone who's voted for him both times and you're gonna vote for him again, all right, then then the end goal of voting for someone would be for your guy to win, right? Your person, your candidate to win. So if all this matters, all right, I'll, I always play devil's advocate. I always put the hat on. I say, okay, I'll play devil's advocate for a moment. I hate to, but I will for you. If the end goal is to get President Trump elected on our side, and on the Democratic side, it's to beat President Trump. Right, get him, get him going, and then he'll be what seventy eight in just uh, ten days. So for another another four years added on to seventy eight, he'd be eighty two. Most people ain't gonna vote for an eighty two year old candidate. All right, which should also point to another thing: why is Biden in the race? Right. Mm -hmm. So there's another there's another little nugget before I even get to my point. But then you go okay. CNN put out a poll last year, not just this year, but CNN, C-SPAN, all of them. They put out all these polls. 75% of Democrats did not want Joe Biden as a candidate. So then you go, well, why, why would the Democrats ride with Biden? From the get-go, they never looked at another candidate. So that alone right there can show you this is an occupation and an operation because it's not the normal what you've seen. If 75% of Democratic voters said, well, they chose him and we don't want to vote and we're not going to vote and they sit at home, that's dangerous because they're already conceding right there by picking them based on what their people want. All right. So that alone should show you it's an operation and an occupation. Then two, you look at the normal, the G what's the GOP normally do? Right. We have we've always had a lot more candidates. We haven't seen that. Mm. The two that 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 blew their mouth, you know, as I said, blow smoke like Nikki Haley and DeSantis. Those were all part of a, a, a point that President Trump was making about Republican rhinos. Right. They'll say anything to get elected and they'll also backstab their own people. So President Trump, they use certain people because President Trump said, I don't give a you know what. S-H-I, well, I won't say it, but he said, I don't give a, about Republicans to his own advisors, proving the point that President Trump has told everybody, and I've, I've still seen Patriot supporters, President Trump supporters say, well, I like this candidate, and he endorsed someone else. That's part of the plan. When he endorses somebody, you vote for them. That's who's going to put in and to implement and to keep going what this operation's been about from the get-go. They're the ones that know the laws and orders moving forward. So then you get to the ultimate point. If they want to get rid of President Trump, the Democrats, the liberals, the fascists, the communists, the Marxists, the socialists, if they all are just, oh, get him out. I can't handle it anymore. I can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I can't take him. It's my new trailer hitch cover. All right. I can't take it. I can't take it anymore. I can't get rid of him. We got to beat him at all costs. All right. If Why would they put him through civil court? See, all, I mean, look, let's just be slang. I mean, let's just be honest. The, the trial about a hooker, right? Most people don't care. Like, you know, even way back to Bill Clinton, if Bill Clinton would have just told the truth, Way back when, nobody would have cared what he was doing as long as he was doing his job everywhere else. Now, that sounds bad, and it's morally bad in a different manner, sure, because you the people who believe in marriage and you know and not cheating, and I get that. But but if you're looking at principles here, all he had to do was tell the truth and no one would care. Because the more that the normal people that don't know the laws and orders see President Trump get drugged through what they think is a ringer, the more support he gets. So it's the same thing. They don't care about his personal life. No one cares as long as he's not killing somebody or, you know, doing all kinds of 
all that. No one cares. So the biggest point to drive home is, okay, if you believe that the end goal is get President Trump voted in and the Democrats is get him out of here, then why don't they invoke the 25th Amendment on him right now? See, President Trump, January the 13th, 2021, was asked about the 25th Amendment. Did he fear the 25th Amendment for himself way back then? He said, no, absolutely not. And they were like, why? He said, well, I, it's no concern to me, but it will come back to haunt Joe Biden. All right. So General Flynn is a, is a touchy subject for his family and his friends, right? Because once again, I don't know his full life. So we're, well, I'm judging based off what happened way back here in 2012, 13, 14, 15, because of where he was and the role he had with Obama and the Obama administration. See, the seat that he was in is only for three-star generals. So, it, and it rotates between the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps, all right? That's, that seat that he was in with Obama is specifically for a three-star general. So there could have been multiple nominations. He could have turned it down. And I don't know who, I don't, I'd have to go back and look and see if, if it was offered to anybody else and did they turn it down or not. But that's a nominated spot by the president to a three-star, not a two-star, one-star, four-star, a three-star general. All right. So there's that. You always have to build that up. So I don't know everything about General Flynn. What is humorous to me is how a guy like me, who I've never met him, I've been in the same room with him twice, all right, close, never met him, though. Uh, and then, you know, I've never tagged him. I don't at people. I don't talk trash to people. Uh, I've never added him. It's just humorous to me that he would block me on Twitter. That's humorous to me uh, because I'm just a, in in. If we're going military right now, I'm low, low, low level compared to what he was. All right. And all I do is talk laws and orders that everybody can tangibly go look up if you want to and study them. So he's a master at 5G warfare, which is misinformation. That's what he that's what his he is skilled at. He's a 5G master. All right. Well. I personally think, you know, and I've told this to buddies, and everybody's got different opinions. That's fine. I've got buddies that like it. i got buddies that don't. You know, and it's not something to really get just, that ain't the, the thing to hang up on. So I tell people, look, it'll come out in the wash, as the old saying is. It'll come out in the wash. You'll find out down the road. I'll find out down the road. Everybody's going to find out down the road. I just go by President Trump. Now, President Trump did pardon him, but there's a lot of reasons that you could pardon. There's a reason. There's reasons why you can pardon people. Now, I don't know if this is why he did it. I'm just speculating. When you pardon somebody, it gives you your civil liberties back. Well, what if President Trump pardoned someone? Let's just use someone else right now. What if he pardoned someone just to see how they'll act in public again? And then what if they turn again? Like DeSantis. He, he's the one that hammered DeSantis. All right, now he's turned again and saying, all right, DeSantis is supporting what we're doing and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, people forget that that just because you have a falling out or you have a, a, a you know, like a ram, ram battering, like the rams in the mountains, just because you have one of those don't necessarily mean that someone's like needs to be taken out or, or you know, executed or something of that nature. It just depends. Maybe, maybe they someone that needs some tough love and going, hey, I'm in this spot right now. Maybe someday you'll get there. But this is where you are right now. Same thing with DeSantis, right? President Trump told everybody. He endorsed him. And then when he endorsed him, he did what? He backstabbed him. He double crossed him. So I don't know what Flynn. I know what Q says about Flynn. I know that. All right. But then again, what if what if that was a psyop? What if that was a poor? So there's always a what if, and you can always rabbit hole 
the what ifs. Because once you do learn in regular warfare and unconventional warfare, if you're someone that's not been in the military and you don't know how that is, deep dive in those and you don't really understand those, that there could be a, a, a good play that it was a bad person with a good play. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that could come out of it. All I tell people is it's going to come out in the wash. Um, I do know some things that I've been told, obviously, not to say. I do have, see, I still have friends in the military. I still have people in the military. Uh, we do talk, sure. Uh, but why wouldn't we talk? It's the first thing. But then, two, that's not something I would tell right now. Because, once again, I, I, my job is not to persuade you. You know, it's same thing. I want you to vote for President Trump because I think he's upheld the Constitution. I know he's done all these things. I can't coerce you to, though. So there's a there's a real razor line. So it's like my job is not to persuade you on a person. Mine is to say, look, here's the laws and orders. Here's the end goal. The end goal is not General Flynn to be president. And so he's not he's not the end goal. President Trump is the end goal. And then when we get on the flip of this, all the dominoes are falling into place on who this leader was, who that leader was, and who this leader was. And there's going to be a lot of people where you're like, which we already know of some of Mitt Romney, uh, Paul Ryan. Uh, we already know because President Trump's already told us who the rhinos are and who needs to go. So there's some. That's what I tell people. When he tells somebody or he gives them a nickname, the nicknames are normally the telltale. Uh, when he nicknames or he points you out, if you see President Trump doing this to somebody, like he did with Fauci, he had a, it's hard to do it on camera, but he had a big, like hard, like doing like that to it. Yeah. Things like that. But F General Flynn, he played a role way back here, and then he played a role up here with President Trump. President Trump fired him. He lied. He lied under oath. But then again, only they know if he was getting threats, death threats, his family threats. You know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that comes into play. Look at what happened in the state of Georgia. I don't know how that 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 Patriots even. I, I, I think me and Captain Kyle and maybe one other, I don't know, but we were the only ones talking about it. But look at the the... The governor of Georgia, right, when he was going to think about flipping the state votes, even though that's part of it, too, but part of the operation. When he was thinking about over, what happened, his daughter's boyfriend in the state of Georgia, not the country of Georgia, not somewhere where you would expect a roadside bomb, his daughter's boyfriend got hit with a roadside bomb in the state of Georgia, gone. Mm -hmm. People don't realize, once again, what the invisible enemy was. So I don't know what he, you know, I've always taken up and defended a general because most of them get to that spot. It is a lot of bull crap that goes through these ranks. A lot of crap already. They're already with others who are wanting to rank up. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of politics there. And then when you get here, you got people coming at you with money all the time that, you know, bribery. Uh, you, It's hard to walk a fine line, but many have. But we just don't know what all he was hit with, what all he was faced with. Um, and I do, at the end of the day, take up for the general. But at the same time, I do know a few things. So I, I tell people, look. He's not your end goal. He's not the focus right now. The focus should be where you are in your community, your state, your family, your friends, first off, in your community, your city, your state. When President Trump endorses somebody, you vote for them because the end goal is to clean out of everything. All the other stuff will come out in the wash. Um, so I've tried to stay neutral on, on it, and, and you should too. Just stay neutral. That way, you ain't right or wrong, and then you don't have to eat crow if you're wrong. Um, there's a lot of people that would just, if they, just, if they stay neutral, <laughs> they wouldn't have to eat crow. Like, why are you trying to be right about something that, that you really don't know about? <laughs> and it, if I don't know about it, you definitely don't know about it, right? And yeah. I'll tell you this, Eric, Eric uh, Trump 
was on a video. It's, it's on a video. And General Flynn was trying to call President Trump and he wouldn't answer. And Eric goes, let me try. So Eric gets on the phone. He didn't answer him. And he says, with all due respect, General, if he won't answer you or if he won't answer me, he's not going to answer you. Hmm. So if that tells you something there too, now that don't, I, like I said, that don't tell you anything. But that just tells you, look, stay in your lane. Worry about things that, that actually, you know, mess with your emotions. What General Flynn does or doesn't do, doesn't it doesn't affect me, right? What affects me is what affects you. Taxes, inflation, you know, the economy. Mm -hmm. Those are the things we got to be focused on. And, what's, and, and who, who's in control of that? President Trump tells you, this is what we got to do. So I, I just, I think if people would just, Drop that topic. There's so much bigger fish to fry than that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. And thank you. I know it's a touchy subject. The, the point wasn't to be controversial. It was just to try to give the audience as close oh, yeah, to the no, truth yeah. as possible discernmentally. I love what you said about coming out in the wash because my grandmother used to say that as, as a kid growing uh -huh. up. So I'm very fond of that statement. Um, moving on, uh, there are just a couple more questions for you. I heard you say on your last interview with, uh, we talked on, offline about this, uh, on X22, that uh, you felt Devin Nunes would be President Choice VP, President Trump's VP of choice. And I'm wondering why you think that. And then I wanted to ask you if you also thought there's a possibility of maybe a, a, a alternative candidate or a different candidate, somebody like a Christy Nome, who's very constitutionally based. So I was just curious on your thoughts on that. I had to say somebody, you know, that that's what it always goes to. It's like, you know, when people say, why'd you, I had to, even a friend of mine was like, why'd you say Devin Nunes? And I was like, man, I, mean, I had to say somebody because, right. you know, uh, it's kind of like picking a horse in a race. Every horse, I, I would not make it if I gambled on horses. I can mm -hmm. tell you right now. And I love horses. I've been around horses. I mean, I'd probably pick a better cow than I would a horse, though, because I've been around a lot more cows than horses. Uh, but, you know, it's like I had to pick somebody. Uh, well, the reason why I said Nunez is just because well one because I have to pick someone and then two though he's uh yeah I'm a lot like him when it comes to the laws and the orders and and not backing down and just and just really going you got to be tough there's a time you got to be tough there's a time you got to be stern and you just got to keep fighting through all the weeds and the, and the this and the that and and you know staying driven on point on focus and I you know just like when uh, I was, I met Nunez down at, uh, I met Devin down at Mar-a-Lago and, and uh, Dave from X-22 was like, man, you two are, you two are just alike. And then, and Devin made a, a joke. It's like, finally someone is, you know, finally someone that, that can, you know, say this, this, and this or something. He, he made a joke and, and Dave was like, yeah, you know, someone that can replace you. In a good way, I mean it, but meaning in a good way, like if you know, God forbid something happened, but that that someone would carry the like a lineage kind of deal. Uh, someone that's just as passionate and driven on, you got to know this stuff, right? Well, that's why I kind of said him, but yeah, I mean, it could be anybody, it, and I, I think it could be someone more outsider, um, you know, and I think it could be someone young, it could be someone, uh, you know, that that. We got to get that back in this nation. We we have to get that back into the younger generations. We have to start feeding them. I mean, you look at Thomas Jefferson. I mean, look at all our founders. They were young men. They weren't, it wasn't like they were 70, 80 when they were writing uh, the Constitution, the Declaration. And I mean, they were younger. I mean, look at Jefferson's writing alone. Thomas Jefferson, ooh, you know, who knows? He knows. I don't. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I agree. And uh, yeah, any, anything that's an idol over God, your, your, your spouse, your parents, your career, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's getting back to Revelation 2, 2, remembering your first love. So yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely with you on that. Last question for today, Derek, I think is a good place to kind of uh, be a nice finishing touch to this great discussion. And, and you touched on it, finances. Uh, I saw that you made an interesting comment on your, your Rattletrap uh, true social channel post whereby you said, quote, 
Um, just think patriots, the haters, trolls, doubters, and liberals were just calling us conspiracy theories just a few months ago for mentioning that the global currency reset was on the OCC.gov. So for those who are not familiar, can you expand on that? Where can they find that information? And what does it entail? Well, you know, and it, it, it's just so funny because, you know, I don't, I don't feed on haters. I think it's, I tell people all the time, I, I think if you flip the script, that's one of my quotes is flip your script, right? Because it's you're either positive or you're negative. You're either happy or sad. You're either mad or you're, you're happy again. Like it's, it, well, when I first went viral, you know, I, I expected to have haters. I mean, I expected to have trolls. I expected to have uh, resistance and all that. But that's just that's just part of it. Um, and so I, I like to agitate them a little bit because I'm like, well, um, you know, I have a different personality than some podcasters, right? You got some podcasters saying we got to be compassionate. I'm like, well, you can be, but I'm I'm gonna I'm still gonna egg them a little bit to go, hey, wasn't it you who said that I was a conspiracy theorist for thinking what I, because all I'm doing is showing people the laws and the orders of dot mill dot dot gov. It'd be different if I had some bizarre, you know, something that I came up with myself and, uh, you know, but I'm like, no, I got the laws. I got the receipts, right? I got the goods. And it's dangerous when people follow the drama versus following someone that, that knows how to get you out of the wilderness. All right, like another leader we know in the Bible. All right, when I'm saying, okay, we can have fun on this little wilderness journey. We can make our jokes and we can laugh. But when you get hungry, you get thirsty, that's serious, right? Well, I know where the water is. I know how to dig the water out of the ground or, you know, whatever that may be, right? Well, so on early on, the comp, the, the, the OCC.gov, the comp, comp troller, right? You go to that, they've got an example up. It's an example that if you were, you know, received an email or if you received, um, you know, a, if you're in person and someone hands you a piece of paper, it's an example of a fraudulent thing. But sometimes via a fraudulent can lead to what's taking place, right? Not, not an actual fraudulent situation, but I'm talking about what the OCC put on their government site. And it says... It's got, and I'd have to pull it up, but it, it's basically in it breaking it down. It says if you, you know, the global currency reset, and then blah blah blah. We're we're doing this, this, and this. It's saying not to, you know, oh, don't put your money here, or you know, don't fall for someone telling you to take your money out and do this. But the global currency reset. Well, how you prove that? Period. Even without laws and orders, straight out the gate, President Trump. I took the picture. I don't know what made me think that night, except for only grammar and punctuation. I tell, you, I tell you, I keep telling people we can make, we can take words and change them all we want. Like, uh, oh, that's bad. Well, that's bad. You know, like Michael Jackson's bad, bad criminal. Well, bad sometimes means good now. <laughs> you know, it's like we got words now that sometimes mean like polar opposite of what. My grandpa would have thought if you'd have told him something was bad, he'd be like, oh, because oh, oh, they didn't talk like that. You know, they were they were straight rigid, just like this. Right. Well. President Trump, I took this picture 4.56 a.m. Central Standard Time with him and, and President Putin side by side on Fox News the night of the election in 2016. It was an early morning. I stayed up. I was so wired. I was just so I couldn't sleep. I didn't even sleep the next day. Ready for reset. Reset was in single quotations. Why? That's like I tell people, if I don't know what I know, and I have seven and a half years worth of law and order to show you, why was that way back there on that night in single quotations? There's your reset right there. All right, there was a re giant reset coming. America first policy, President Trump. That's what that talks about. You go look in the Indo-Pacific, which is a military booklet, Indo-Pacific, Pompeo. It says all nations will be sovereign nations independent on their own. That's basically paraphrasing it. Go read that. All right, so global currency reset. We kept telling people global currency reset. Now, what I tried to refrain to do, and I've never used these words, so I want to make sure they don't get sliced and diced. 
from uh, mine and yours. I know you won't do that, but I know that people watching this, we got to make sure, right? I've never used the words Jasar and Asar for a reason, because you don't need them. All you need are the Quantum Initiative Act by President Trump, Quantum, Quantum Leap, and Quantum and Blockchain Technology, and then once again, gold-backed digital currency versus central bank. There's a huge difference. This is decentralized. This is centralized. President Trump, we're doing away with that. He just said it to the liberta libertarians just a week ago uh, in the end of May, right? He said, I will what? I will protect Bitcoin. I will protect crypto. And also, we're going to have gold-backed digital currency. We won't, I'll, I'll, we're not going to have central bank. So you got to keep in mind, those are different. You hear go back digital currency, you hear digital currency, then you hear central bank digital. It two different things though. Right. Right. So all the way back here, we were all called conspiracy theorists for saying there's going to be reevaluations of the dollar, reevaluations, reevaluations. Now, what a lot of people are confusing this with, everybody thinks a lot of people think they're going to be trillionaires. That ain't the case. Though our dollars can be worth a dollar again, and it will have a form of, of backup where we, hopefully we don't get where we are again in all kinds of debt and inflation that you can't even use on the screen. Like, we don't need to get there. That's what causes friction. That's what causes tension. That's what causes wars with other nations, all right? When you start owing somebody and then you're not paying up and then it gets topsy-turvy and the next thing you know, bam, clashing, all right? That's what causes some things. And everybody's been in it. Every nation's been in debt with somebody. So it's just been this massive chaos. So President Trump, what is he the master at? This is what I loved. What, like, this is what I loved about the haters and the trolls, the liberals and the fascists and all. It's my, oh, how we, why do we want a man who went bankruptcy? Why why did he file bankrupt all the time? Why do we want that guy as a head? Do they not know that bankruptcy is a strategy in business? Like they teach you this in, in business school, mm -hmm. right? It's a it's a strategy. All right. So it's perfect that we had him in. See, that's why he was the mastermind at that. And then he's he delegates. He's a master delegator because he's a master businessman. He delegated the military to do their jobs, generals. But he also went to school. He went to a school where his parents sent him away to a military academy. So he also has a background in it as well. All right. So look at what happened. Zimbabwe, gold back digital. Uh, even China just last week dumped, I think it was either 12 trillion or 12 billion. Uh, it was so way up there. All right. So everybody's going through the dumping of the U.S. dollar. And what's being put out right now, the latest article is that, oh, this hadn't happened since 1933. Oh, what, what happened just right before 1933? The stock market oh. crash. Yep. Right. But thank God. Don't panic, ladies and gentlemen. This was planned, though. This was not one of those situations. This was that was planned by the bad dudes. This is a plan by the good guys, and they're flipping all of our currencies around. They're flipping it all around. They're reevaluating it. It ain't gonna be like that. So don't panic there. This is a good thing. All right. So the dollar's gonna be worth a dollar again. Thank God. We're gonna do away with a lot of taxes. You've seen it already. Over 42 states have abolished the gold and silver tax. All right. There, ladies and gentlemen, we have been, our dollar has been so jackaled and chained uh, in our lives. And we did what? We have lived our life every four years, every four years, every four years because of what a president, and it hasn't supposed to look like this whatsoever. And President Trump showed the world. What a president's supposed to look like. He had what a six hundred and eighty-six billion dollar defense budget for the military and never started a war. All right, so that's why you got to flip your script and praise what Donald Trump has done. Like that's they now he gets the credit for it. There was other people back here that had all the plans, and he's just as part of it. But look at what they made. They made him come in on TV every day. He was on TV. He was the most transparent president every single day, mm -hmm. doing what he was supposed to do as a president every single day. And then the $686 billion never started a war. He also proved, oh, he proved the polar opposite of what all these other presidents in the past 
Never did because they were part of a corporation. Now, that don't mean that they were all bad personally. It just means that some of them didn't realize how deep the deep state was, right? President Trump told you that. He said, even I didn't realize how deep the swamp actually was. So that alone is humility as well. He don't know everything, so he has to rely on people who do. Everybody knows something somewhere, and he's the face of it. Uh, but this is beautiful. It's brilliant. Like I said, I, it's, you know, outside of biblical, I guess you could just say divine. I mean, I don't really know mm -hmm. any other word that, that could really describe what's been put into place in every facet. But the Brits, I mean, you see in all the different things, ladies and gentlemen. So we were just called conspiracy theorists just not long ago until all this stuff. It, you know, and like I tell people, a lot of people are causing uh, friction in your own life. A lot of people are causing, uh, you know, turmoil in your own life for no reasons. Like it's just because it's all going to come out once again in a wash. Uh, but then there's some people like me who've not that I've had all the answers, but I kind of do because they're all laws and orders. It's not anything I made up. I just know how to put it all together in a puzzle and a blueprint. And it will give you a lot more peace once you feed your manna with what President Trump has put out there. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, you also just to add to the backs of what you said real quick, Derek, you have China buying gold hand over fist. That serves two purposes, <laughs> one to de-dollarize, but also to honor the bonds that they owe us and all the land grabs that they took. So Trump's when he said China's going to pay us back at least 10 trillion, he was being literal, not figurative. You just follow what he says, like you said, right? And then remember what he said, His, I think it was March or February of his first term, 17, uh, when he was at the White House speaking, one of the Japanese reporters asked him about the currency reset. And we said, we're going to have a global currency reset for all the currencies to go back to mass assets for fair trade and commerce, because it's the only way to make it right. So yeah, I mean, he's been telling us all along, we just have to pay attention. Um, the, reciprocal, the reciprocal act well, the reciprocal act he keeps talking about I will have a reciprocal act when I get back in as president which mm -hmm. means if China wants to hit us with a 300% tariff well we'll find something to put a 300% tariff on them and that way it's reciprocal right, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff and I don't mean it's always bad it doesn't mean it's bad uh, for people you know like oh 300% well we hit them with something and, it, and then it becomes equal yeah. um so they're winning something, we're winning something, they're losing something, we're losing something. Yeah, it's a mirror, it's a mirroring effect, balances it's it a mirror. out. So uh, uh, Derek, as always, it's a pleasure to have you. Look forward to having you again uh, soon. Um, where can people uh, find your book? Well, so I have it on rattletrap1776.com. Um, I also, I'm just now getting my other book lined up on Amazon because I there's a lot we don't we can't do international shipping from Shopify. Unfortunately, their system is not uh, get to plug it in individually every country, every zip code, uh, and that would take I don't know how long. Um, so what we do is say if you want it signed by me, then you go to the rattletrap 1776.com. Uh, it'll only show four, like four pieces of apparel. So you click see more gear or get more gear, and it'll send you over to the page where you can find the books. Um, or if you want it on Kindle, uh, both of them are on Kindle, uh, Amazon, and then uh, I'm I'm loading up today, trying to load it up today, the uh, the Royal Flush of Country Music, which it became a bestseller in like three days. This one, the new book, uh, yes. so it's uh, on, on Amazon. It became a bestseller. Um, so there's that, and so anyway, it just depends on how quick you want it. If you want it super fast, Amazon's your ticket. Um, if you want it on your computer, your phone, Kindle's your ticket. If you want it signed by me, it takes right now, it's about a, anywhere from a week turnaround just because we're ordering more books. Uh, we're out of books right now, so we're ordering more. Um, they'll be here within like a week. And then, so Great. that's it. We'll make sure to put, thank you for that. We'll put all your links as we always do in the description. And folks, you heard Derek uh, talking about how you can find it right in the government documentation and proof about the global currency reset. So if you are looking to get Dinar, Dong, Dong Zim or any other bonds, et cetera, or just improve your position, we'll leave a link in there for you as well. Derek Johnson, thanks for joining us, good sir. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Always.